What's up, BTV? My name is Kyla Carter, and I will be your host for today's BTV segment. We have a lot of informative segments for you today, so please stay tuned. Because of Corona, a lot of worldwide events are being handled differently, not only worldwide, but school-wise. Let's take a look at a couple events that are being handled differently because of COVID-19. All right, what's up, HF? I'm here with all the information that you need. So on May 1st, 2020, graduation caps and gowns will be distributed, as well as seniors that have items that have been issued by the school, those will be returned. So a list of the assigned and or checked out items that you have will be sent to your email and to your parents' email. So be sure to check your spam folder and the subject line will be school property to be returned. Social distancing measures will be used. All occupants are required to stay in their car at all times. An informational letter will be sent electronically outlining preparations prior to arri arriving campus and will contain a map with procedural instructions when you do arrive on the campus. So the HF graduation and cabin gown distribution and school property pickup on May 1st will go as follows. At 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m., seniors A through E will be coming to pick up and receive their cap and gown. At 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m., seniors F through K. At 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m., seniors L through R. And at 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m., seniors S through Z. So that's all the information I have. And so make sure you're checking your email consistently. And until then, I'm Laura Zapata for VTV. With everything going on in the world right now and school getting canceled for the rest of the year, virtual prom is a go. While it may not be ideal, there is absolutely no reason to not dress up and have some fun with it. Or even hop into your Porsche and take it for a little spin beforehand. You go, Johnny. So, on May 16th from 7 to 9 p.m., put that prom dress or tux on, take lots of pictures, then get your radio and turn it on to WHFH 88.5 FM. Hop on the live stream and get ready to boogie. Prom court will be announced at 8 p.m. Prom 2020 Virtual Edition. Be there or be square. For VTV, this has been Kelly Van Etten. Not only are seniors being affected by events changing, but the school as a whole. And everyone's asking the same questions. What's next? How does this affect HF as a whole? Stay tuned for the further answers. On Friday, Governor J.B. Pritzker announced that all private and public schools will remain shut down for the rest of the school year. To avoid the loss of potentially tens of thousands of lives, we must enact an immediate stay-at-home order for the state of Illinois. So that is the action that I am announcing today. Unfortunately, that means HF will not return to physical class for the 2019-2020 school year. Student activities that were previously postponed are now canceled or have gone virtual. 
such as concerts and other large events. For example, HS Band held a virtual performance of Vikings Fight On. <laughs> And now most of the end of the school year activities will be of the virtual kind. Plans for senior award convocation, graduation, and prom are still moving forward. Although administration has not made an official announcement, the virtual plan is the most likely option due to Pritzker's announcement. The days for these virtual events will not change from the actual assigned dates. Prom is still scheduled for May 16th, the Honors Convocation is set for May 20th, and the 2020 Graduation Ceremony will take place on Sunday, May 31st, as scheduled. VTV is here to keep you up to date on the changes happening during this uncertain time. You can check the HF website or your school email for more updates from the administration. Stay safe, HF, and stay inside. Because of corona death rates rising, a lot of states have issued state regulations all around the nationwide. And with that, a lot of people are tired and are wanting to go outside. So with that, people have been starting protests. Let's take a look at how a couple students feel about being in quarantine and having to practice social distancing. Okay, so personally, I agree with the stay-at-home orders that are being put in place. Uh, for a couple of reasons, one being no one else, like it, no one else has any better idea. I mean, we can all go back outside, but then you risk the potential of someone having Corona and doesn't know it. And then it spreads and it's on the communities again and everyone's catching it. So right now, this is the best thing we have to offer. So why not stay at home? And another reason is because if the doctors, the people who have dedicated their life to understanding medicine and saving lives and they're the ones telling us that staying at home is going to be the best way to help flatten the curve and i see no reason to not believe them you know what i mean so as far as staying at home goes i definitely think that there's no reason to not stay home i think the quarantine rules aren't overboard because not everybody knows whether or not they are at risk for the disease so i think it's necessary that we do stay quarantined protests that are going on right now are absolutely absurd I think it's so irresponsible for people to congregate like that, knowing they could spread the virus. I also think it's so unfair to healthcare providers who have been working tirelessly to end this. I understand that people want to get back to work and make money so they can provide for themselves and their families. However, it's just not worth people dying over. I think these quarantine uh, rules are necessarily overboard. Uh, I think that they're overboard to the fact that when we look at it, we're not able to leave the house, see anyone, or do basically anything publicly. We're just stuck to our house, even though they're not sometimes getting followed. But I think it's overboard the way we look at it. But um, also, I think it's very necessary, so like necessarily overboard, because it's our this virus is obviously very contagious and it's our only way of slowing down cases and like putting a stop to this all is if we take the overboard rules and like follow them because we won't have any contact and it will slow it down eventually and that's one of the only ways we could stop it because of having to stay in quarantine and having to remain in social distancing, school is sadly officially over. But e-learning is still in session. Let's take a look at how a couple students feel on having to do e-learning for the remainder of the school year. I'm very disappointed in school being completely finished because as a senior, you're looking forward to having your last year of high school and making all those memories and you're also looking forward to especially the end of the year activities but now since everything is canceled we won't be able to make those memories um hearing that the rest of the school year has been canceled is really a hard pill to swallow especially as a senior because things like you know prom senior week graduation senior bon voyage being able to throw papers on the deck is stuff that i've been looking forward to since freshman year maybe even before um, and it's just something that's really sad and completely out of our control. So, you know, you just have to cope with it the best you can. I really miss all my friends. I was hoping to see everybody, you know, before the school ended. Like, even if we only came back for, you know, the, the last month, the last two weeks, it's still the being back part that really counted. I'm kind of sad now that the school year's over just because we won't have a traditional prom or graduation and we won't get to end the school year right by throwing our papers up on the senior deck like every other senior class has. 
But at the same time, I'm grateful for the past four years that I've had at HF, and I really wouldn't trade it for the world. Honestly speaking, school was like my favorite part of the day. Like my friends, my teachers, everybody around me was just positive. So not being able to go back to school is really heartbreaking, especially since this is our senior year. Along with many other students, I think I can say that I would rather be at school than be at home. Um, I'm pretty sad about missing some of my senior year activities, end of the year activities like prom and graduation. Um, I also miss seeing all my friends, so hi everyone. <laughs> And yeah, I hope everyone stays safe and stay healthy, guys. So see you soon. If you have been to its television, then you are aware of the long-awaited Bulls documentary that aired this weekend. Let's take a look at how a couple students feel after watching this event. Last Sunday, millions of fans got a glimpse of Michael Jordan's legendary career in the first two episodes of his miniseries, The Last Dance. A lot of questions are surrounding the series, with Scottie Pippen's contract and whether Jordan is the best to ever play the game of basketball. Take a listen to what some HF students have to say about the film. The first two episodes of The Last Dance were phenomenal. I could watch all 10 episodes if I had the chance. Uh, for someone who never got to see Jordan play, it really gave me a better understanding on how good he actually was and how he's truly the GOAT. I think after watching The Last Dance, Michael Jordan is still the best player of all time because of the teammates he had to carry to the championship before he got Scottie Pippen and uh, Dennis Rodman. I thought, I thought the new Jordan documentary was pretty good, actually. Um, since I kind of got to see more of like the the unseen clips of like the games and his highlights and kind of more how like everything that happened and like his his relationship with the team, the management, why Scottie Pippen wanted to leave and like him leaving. I think the Last Dance documentary was amazing. The producers did an amazing job of telling them the story of the 97-98 Bulls. It was like we got an all-access pass to the team. I said the Jordan documentary, The Last Dance, strongly changed my opinion on who the greatest of all time was. Because after getting beat in a game of golf, Michael Jordan scored 63 points in a playoff game against one of the greatest teams of all time, breaking the all-time record. And all that in just his second year of the league. After watching Last Dance, I couldn't believe how bogus they were doing Scottie Pippen. I'm so mad, but I mean, it's a must watch, especially if you're a Bulls fan. It's two episodes in The Last Dance and uh, really enjoying it. It's cool to have a fresh take, <laughs> um, fresh perspective on, you know, MJ. Um, really the first time that a lot of people have gotten to see what he was like in the locker room and practices, stuff like that. I really enjoyed the Michael Jordan documentary because in the past, I've, like people have always been saying Jordan's this, Jordan's that, Jordan plays like this, and to actually like watch like old highlights and clips of like how we played and like how we came up and what kind of teammate he was, uh, that was really fascinating to me. Make sure to tune in this Sunday for episodes three and four of The Last Dance. For VTV, I'm Joe Sullivan. Well, VTV, that is all we have for today's segment. And while it has been a blast being your host, I will see you guys later. From VTV, this has been Kyla Carter.